Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is kind of a follow-up on the oval port testing. Um, that Hopefully you've already seen that video where I compared a whole bunch of different oval port heads, this being one, the Pro Max 290 heads. And I want to give an update of what's going to happen next with these Pro Max 290 heads. And I didn't want to put it in that last video because the video was probably already too long. Anyway, so I'm going to show you what's been done. Because one of the things that several of you have noticed that went through the whole have listened to the big block dyno testing and said, why don't you put a 2300 intake valve into the Pro Max 290s? And um, because as, as you know, I told you what, what I was gonna do in the 317s is I was gonna mill their chambers down to 110 cc so that they're the same cc size as these 290s. And we're gonna see if the compression actually makes up the difference or was it the port velocity? Um, because obviously the 290s would have a higher port velocity than the 317s. So that's one of the questions and hopefully we can see if it made, if that my milling of the 317s, we would get the torque that these ones gained. But at the same time, several people said, why don't you put a 2300 in the Pro Max 290s? So in these Roval ports, why don't you put the 2300 in? And at first I was hesitant, uh, but now I ended up doing it. And I'm gonna show you what's been done and why. So here is this one. This one, I redid the valve job. You might say, why did you redo the valve job? Well, one, I wanted to make sure I put in a good valve job because the 317 just got a good valve job. Why don't I put one on this? It just made sense. The heads are apart. Let's make sure it seals up. And usually they picks up a little bit of flow. Now, this one has the 225 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. Now, unlike the 317s, I kept the 45 degree valve job on both of these. Um, and the reason for it is, you know, the 317 is definitely more of a racier head than what this is. So this was, I was thinking more street use, even though we're just using this for dyno testing. Let's just go ahead and keep them at a 45 degree, just like that. It's not even one of my aggressive, excuse me. It's not one of my aggressive 45 degree valve jobs. It's, it's the middle. I use this one for lots of stuff. So 225 intake valve, 188 exhaust valve, nothing new right there. And what you see is exactly what I just did and just reflowed it. Um, use the same valve except for there's the exhaust valve it has no back cut and here's the intake valve yeah it's kind of dirty it has a back cut uh just refloat it so and, and i'm going to get to what i think happened with the results in just a minute so there we are 225 intake valve now as you notice it's a five angle valve job you're like no it's not well it's because not all the angles came in because you can see right there that other part that's what's left from the whatever they did to the seat before i've gotten it now, when I did the valve job, even though I did it, it leaves this ridge right here for sure. It's pretty hard here, and you can see it most of the ways around. Not so bad on that side, but definitely from there over. And then I refloat it. So let's look at the flow numbers real quick. And I only float the long runner just because this was kind of an experiment. So the ones we're going to compare would be one and three. Those are the same runner. And it doesn't look like it helped it at all. It hurt. So we look at one it lost three CFM, 200 valve lift, lost eight. It lost eight at three and at four, which is what I consider pretty critical. It lost almost 13. At five, it lost five. And the, at six on, it's getting stout now. Now it's picking up. At 600, it picked up almost nine. And then look at this, 358 at 700 valve lift. That's its peak flow. That's pretty good for this size of runner. And no port work, no grinding, obviously. It picked up there, but it lost so much down low that I would say it would be interesting to test this, but I just don't have time or money to do more dyno testing like this. Be interesting to see if, what if just doing this, nothing else, if it actually makes more power or not, because you did pick up peak flow. Peak flow gain quite a bit. Uh, low lift flow, you, you heard it. And you might say, well, man, why didn't your valve job pick it up? Because it's kind of what I thought too, but there's a couple things working against it. The biggest one being that ridge. From the factory, it goes, they're not as deep, so it comes flat and it comes straight off. So it's not, the air's not hitting this ridge and hurting low lift flow. So when the valve lifts just barely open, it's, the air has to come around that. It's just a little ridge that it doesn't like. So smoothing this up is probably gonna benefit and it would have picked up these low lift flow numbers. But I didn't do that, just float it like it was. Um, the other thing, and this is the bigger reason for showing you this, is this. Even though on the camera you don't see this, this is a very sharp angle right here. What I mean is the air comes and it hits like a ridge. It's very sharp and hard. 
And I know you're like, why don't you just blend it out? Because I didn't blend any of the valve job, obviously. You could just blend it and make it roll better and it would flow more. The problem is I measured the throat. That's the distance from here to here. And if you watch my what not to do when porting, if the throat's too large, you've made a turd. You will make a turd no matter what. Because now you have very little angles to make the turn and you're gonna end up with, with kind of what you have here. Really big peak flow, very low, low lift flow. Or, and I don't really care from 400 is the number I really care about. Down below, I'm not as much. But that's a hurt. So I can't see this have made more power. So I can't blend this in because the throat's kind of as big as it could be for this size of valve. So you're stuck. Uh, don't get me wrong, blending this would definitely help. But this really needs addressed. Because essentially it looks like, forget my drawing, it looks something like that. So let me get an idea. This is the port. We'll pretend that the valve would have been here. There. My pin decides not to write in this. That ridge right there, the air is just boiling off. So it makes the port feel like it's smaller than what it is. That's not ideal. I would rather have a curve like this. Because this is an hourglass. Think of this as your tune venturi. This is where things magically happen. However, that's not how a port looks. We bend it or curves over and it looks something like, should look like this. Instead, I've got a sharp edge right there at that point there. So that's hurting it. So I was like, ah, oh, crap. There's a way to fix it though. I cut the valves to a two, 300. So now that's 50 thousandths bigger, which is really 25 on each side. You could tell I've got more of the angles in. You can see it. See how I've got all five of the angles are coming in, even a little bit of aluminum hit there. If you look here, it's still got some left there, but more of the angles are coming in. So it's allowing it to make more of a turn to get out. Now also, because even though the throat's gonna end up the same size it was on a 225, because it's a bigger valve, it's got more angles that turn out, so it's gonna flow more. Am I gonna flow it exactly like this? No, because I'm gonna be in a worse position. It's gonna look like crap because the ridge got worse. And the reason why is because the ridge was there, but as I cut to a bigger valve, it scoots it out, which makes more of it. So until I blend this out, there's no sense of flowing. It's gonna flow worse. It's gonna make it look like I made a mistake it's just because I haven't blended. So that is what's gonna happen with it. So this is the same, same exact valve profile, by the way, same valve job profile, 45 degree, it's just bigger. But because it has more angles here, it make more turn out. And remember the smallest point, which is the throat, is the same, is gonna be the same from the 225 to the 2300. So that's what's gonna be done. Now I am gonna do a little bit of trickery as far as port work. I'm just not heavy, heavy port work, just trying some little bit of a touch up some stuff I wanna try. Mainly I'm gonna try a different shape on the short side that I've never done before. Um, I think it's gonna pick it up. I'm make it, not gonna make it too large, just see what if we can't get it to improve a little bit. Not trying to make it too big and hurt the velocity and make the whole thing pointless. Um, so there's that. What about the exhaust valve job? Well, that's the other thing too, it lost flow there too. And the biggest part is, I mean, some spots it was better, at 400 was better. But the reason why that's down, same reason. It's got the ledge. Not as bad. Really, it's ledges on the throat part. My finger right here, because I didn't blend any. So you have a sharp edge still, and that's, it just needs to be blended. That would come back. But I wanted to show you what was going on with it. So I am going to not fully port the head, just do a little bit of stuff. But I can tell you, this throat's going to stay the same. I'm just going to do a little trickery, and I'll kind of show you, make the bowl a little bit bigger. Definitely reshaping the short sides, what I'm after, and... We'll see what this can't do. 317 is all they're doing is getting blended. I'm not doing any port work at all. So a little bit of pork with the work with this and blending and uh, see if it can't match the 317's power and torque. But who knows with the 317 getting uh, the smaller chamber, it's gonna be a good race. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. By the way, all this was flowed on a 4310 bore, no exhaust pipe. Um, hopefully we'll get back on the dyno and get to try all this stuff out and see how cool or what it does. I gotta cut the valve job on this one still, so on the intake to make it three, two, 300. But guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. If you have questions or comments, please put them in the comments. And you guys, take care.